Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us pray. God, we thank you because you are good and you are always faithful. We ask for your spirit to enlighten us today with your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, the title for my message today is Finding Our Caves in a Noisy World. Now, during this period, we talk about uh, COVID-19 as an unseen enemy. And some people describe COVID-19 as omnipresent. Yes, I know that we usually you know, uh, relate or to associate omnipresence with God. But because this COVID-19, it seems to be everywhere. Uh, so some people say that COVID-19 is omnipresent. But I will also say that there's another kind of omnipresence that's even more pervasive in our life. That is the omnipresence of noise. Look at the picture. Uh, you, nowadays, you can even uh, watch videos and, or, or, or screen, uh, scroll through Facebook on your phone without needing to hold on to your phone uh, because there is a lazy neck phone holder. Think about it during this time, this past three months, uh, we have been spending a lot of time on, on the internet, on social media, uh, chasing after the latest news, uh, trying to fill our lives with noise. I'm not saying that internet is bad, but I'm saying that uh, I think a lot of times we are so scared of silence that when we are not doing anything, we'll be immediately thinking about picking up our phones uh, or our tablets to watch something. So yes, there is this omnipresence of noise in our lives. The question is, are we afraid of silence in our lives? Because a lot of times when we, when we are, are free, you know, we run away from silence, we run to noise. Yes, there are times we do that because we want to connect with other people. We are very afraid of isolation. We are afraid of loneliness. But a lot of times we do not want to uh, face silence because we do not want to confront ourselves or more accurately, we do not want God to confront us in our silence. Now, there was a time in David's life that there was so much noise. It was after the defeat of Goliath, and from then on, Saul has been sending David out for camp, uh, military campaigns. And every time God's favor was with David, and David achieved victory. So every time David came back, the people came out, and the women were dancing with instruments, and as they danced, they sang, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten of thousands. Surely this must be, have been a very unfamiliar atmosphere uh, and scenario for David, because all this while, he was so used to being alone. Uh, think about the time when Samuel was at his father's house, uh, and uh, he asked Jesse, uh, David's father, to gather his family, uh, for uh, this uh, Samuel's arrival. But David was not there because David was being assigned as a shepherd boy to take care of the sheep. So we can see from here that he was not so, um, not so uh, focused on, you know, someone who was usually neglected in the house. But in the, because of that uh, aloneness, he has learned to spend this time of uh, loneliness or aloneness with God in intimacy. That is where he built his relationship with God. But now, suddenly, because of this newfound fame, there was so much noise, celebration, cheering and support from people. But then, we can see from 1 Samuel chapter 22 verse 1, when Saul was pursuing and wanting to kill David, David had nowhere to go because no one wanted to take David in for fear of Saul. So in 1 Samuel chapter 21 verse 1, 22 verse 1, David came to the cave of Adullam. And that is where most likely he penned Psalm 142. So we can see what is the problem here that David was facing in verse 3. People have hidden a snare for me. That means people have hidden a trap for me. Maybe it's ambush, uh, maybe it's some scheme. But he knew or he felt that at, at any time of his life, you know, as he, was, as he was walking, there might be people who were ambushing, waiting to kill him. And verse 4, he says to God, 
I have no refuge. I have no one at my right hand. That means he has nowhere to go and he had no friends. And he said, no one cares for my life. No one cares for my life. And how did he express himself to God? As we move back to verse 1, he cried aloud and he lifted up his voice to God. Verse 2, he poured out his complaint and told his trouble to God. Now, I'm sure even during this time, or even before MCO and, or RMCO right now, in our lives, we have been facing troubles and struggles. But for many of us, this time, the troubles and struggles might have compounded because of isolation, because of uncertainty of the future, because of the instability of income, because of the friction in the household. Then surely during this time, there are more troubles and miseries added on to our existing struggles. But as I said before, we might have been running away from silence. We might be, have been running away from God because we do not want to confront our troubles. Therefore, we run into the, the virtual world, the internet, to escape from all these miseries that are actually there. So David, during this time of his life, thank God during that time they did not have internet, but he went into the cave and that is where he experienced God in a deeper way once again. He poured out his thoughts, he poured out his complaints to God. So if you are going through some struggles in your life right now, do not be fearful, do not hesi be hesitant because God wants you to pour out your complaints and tell your trouble to Him because He is your Father. Yes, it, we can talk, tell, it, tell it to our friends, we can, we can uh, complain to our family members, but first and foremost, go to the one that is faithful. Go to the one who is eager to hear your troubles and complaints, which is God Himself. So as we look at verse 3 and verse 4 where David was pouring out his complaints and troubles before God. In verse 3 after saying that people or before he said people have hidden a snare from me, he was being reminded that it is God who watched over my way. Yes, along the way people might ambush me but ultimately I know that God is watching over me. I am not alone. And when he said I have no refuge, no one cares for my life, the climax of this psalm is in verse 5. I say, God, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Now, as he pours out his complaint to God in that, inter in that time of loneliness and solitude, God inspired him. God reminded him that I'm watching over you and I am your refuge and your inheritance in this land. So you can see that when David went into the cave away from the noises that he was so unfamiliar with, he found God once again. And when he found God once again, he regained his strength because he's reminded once again that the reality is God is with him. Because sometimes we are so overwhelmed by troubles in our life that we forget the real reality is that God is with us. We think that our troubles are with us and God, is, God has abandoned us or God is so silent that he might have forgotten us. But when we draw strength from God, when we look to God and, and let, allow God to confront our troubles, His strength, His peace will overwhelm us from our troubles and problems. That is why today my, my question to you or my challenge to us is, do not run away from our troubles. Do not run to noises in our lives to fill that void of, of silence in our lives. But we must, in this noisy world, even during this time, find our caves go to our caves like david did away from the noises and draw strength from god because ultimately you know that every time you go to the internet for noises for for comfort for refuge you go away feeling temporary relief but you know that it is temporary you will after some time you will go back for relief and you realize that it does not cure the trouble the troubles and the restlessness in your heart because only God can. And David found that secret of solitude and intimacy with God in his cave. That is why in that cave he said, God, you are my refuge. Because as he looked at the cave, surely, you know, he'll be thinking that, yes, this is a temporary cave, uh, this is a temporary shelter and refuge for me, but God is my permanent refuge. 
that is why we thank our Lord Jesus Christ that when he came to this world he offered us a new way a way that is being accomplished by his uh, his work on the cross he said come to me all you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. now the the in immediate context of this passage is about Jesus is trying to tell us that you have been or to the Jews he's, he has, he's saying that you have been trying to work your way towards salvation you've been trying to gain eternal life through good works and you are weary and burdened because it is a mission impossible but Jesus said I'm going to offer you a new way because when you come to me by faith you will find that rest you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light because the only thing that you need to do is to come to me by faith easy not through accomplishing good works for salvation not to find your own methods to to meet your own problems that's why in the same way you know we have a lot of problems in life and jesus is not saying now you need to you need to go through these five steps because before you can achieve peace in your heart the only thing jesus said is come to me that is the, that is why we need to come to in we need to find our caves in this noisy world and come to jesus christ our lord to find rest for our souls it is a promise because when you come to jesus christ in your cave Jesus promised you that you will surely find rest for your souls. And we thank God for that. But the question we need to ask next is, is it a selfish uh, uh, pursuit that we just, just want to find peace for our souls? We need to ask ourselves, why do we want to find our caves? Why do we want to find rest for our souls? For what? Because there is that, that individual element where, where we want to be blessed. We want to have peace. It is important. But surely, in, in the Bible, we are always being reminded that we are always being blessed to bless other people. Now, as you look at verse 7, the last verse of this psalm of David, he said, Set me free from my prison, that I may praise your name. Then the righteous will gather about me because of your goodness to me. David is saying that, Lord, may you rescue me, may you display your goodness towards me, so that when I'm set free from my prison, physical prison in the cave, and the emotional prison of depression and helplessness i will have more reasons even more to praise you and then the righteous the people who are following god will gather about me they will see the the work of god in my life they will see the goodness of god in my life and therefore they will gather about me and praise god together with david so there is another purpose in what david is saying about asking god to set him free as if as he wants that rest for his soul he wants people to see god's goodness in his life so that god's name can be glorified so immediately after he went to adulam the cave of adulam not to say immediately but immediately in the next verse it says that all those who were in distress or in debt or discontented gathered around him and he became their commander about 400 men were with him surely from verse 1 to verse 2 this is the season we do not know how long but this was the season that he wrote psalm 142 so immediately not to say immediately but uh, after this psalm they said the righteous were gathered around me god answered his prayer that people gathered around him now how righteous they were we do not know but these were the the marginalized these were the 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 uh those who are, who are, who are uh, trouble and problem laden because they were distressed, they were in debt, and they were discontented. But they gathered around him and he became their commander. Surely we can, we can see here that because of his intimate experience with God in the cave, he re regained his strength in the Lord. He, and then God saw that his mindset and his resources had been replenished. And therefore God sent the people to him so that the people will be ministered by him so that the people will be encouraged by his his uh, attitude in the midst of trouble so we ask why do we want to find caves we find caves so that we can find rest 
so that when we meet other people, we can bring that rest to other people as well. Not that we are the source of rest, but we are the channel of rest to other people. So that when other people see us, it is not wanting to come and meet our needs because our needs are already being met by God, but we go to other people to meet their needs. So that is why during this time, you know, we'll be thinking about, wow, when's the next time I'm going to have Teta with my, with my friends? When's the next time I'm going to physically meet my friends in the church? Now, before you, you even think about this, think about, have, are, are you ready for that? Have you replenished your, your, your strength and your peace from God? Have you reconnected with God? Have, you, have, you, have your needs been met by God? At least emotional needs. So that when you go to church or when you meet other people, you are filled by God to flow into the lives of others in terms of your resources. If not, when you meet other people, you are just asking other people to meet your loneliness, your need for a companionship. Then everyone will be so hungry for companionship. No one is giving, everyone is asking. Now I think about the Middle Ages during the, uh, in the Middle Ages in church history, there was, there was a very special group of people called the Anchorites and the Anchorists. Um, anchorites refer to men and anchoresses belong to, uh, refer to women. Now this was a group of people that they felt that they wanted to or they were convicted to dedicate their lives to be isolated from others and to pray and to intercede for themselves and other people. Now you might find that this is very extreme uh, and you might see that our isolation or our, our social isolation and distancing now pale in comparison. But what I find interesting is that, you know, they confine themselves for, their, for life uh, in, an, in a house or in a small room that is anchored to the church. That cell is called an anchor hole. Uh, one of the most famous anchorites is Julian of Norwich. Now, what fascinated me is that they are not like hermits. They are Christian hermits that live really out, out of the world. You know, they want to be away from the world. But these are people that are still part of the world but they do not live uh, with others they you can only see them through the windows yeah and they, they they have a window that faces the street that they can see people walking around walking past them and they have a window that is uh, that they can see the church so that when church, church service is on they can participate in the church service from their cell or they are from their anchor hole but what fascinated me is that I, I see that, I read from the, 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 the research that these anchorites and anchor, anchorites and anchoresses, they were very famous for their wisdom from God. And there will be times where people will come to them to ask for advice, ask for God's uh, wisdom upon their lives. Now this could only be possible because of their daily intimate relationship with God. Because they really literally live in their caves to seek God. That is why I want to... I use this example to illustrate that we have to go to our anchor hole now and then uh, to, find that, to, find that, to find that resource from God so that when people come to us or we reach out to other people, it is not to ask but to give, to bless other people, uh, to meet their needs because we have first met God. So we, there are times we need to you know, in every day in our lives, we need to go to our anchor hole, our caves, to seek God. So that when we come out from our caves, we can minister to other people. Just like how David did. Just like how Julian of Norwich and the other anchorers and anchorites did. So I want to end here with um, a quote from Dietrich Bonhoeffer uh, in uh, one of his uh, books, which sums up the the relationship between being in solitude and being in fellowship with other people. Um, this is what he said, the individual must realize that his hours of aloneness react upon the community. In his solitude, he can sunder or besmirch the fellowship or he can strengthen and hallow it. Every act of self-control of the Christian is also service to the fellowship. One who returns to the Christian family fellowship after fighting the battle of the day brings with him the blessing of his aloneness, but he himself receives anew the blessing of the fellowship. Now what Bonhoeffer is saying here is that our time of solitude determines whether we can be a blessing or we become 
um, we bring negative effect to the community when we meet them because when we are alone when uh, we exercise self-control and connect with God but when we return to the community and or into the fellowship we bring that 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 blessing of that day of my of our aloneness with God back into the community so in the same way if we do we are not able to connect with God during our times of aloneness especially during this time but run to our, run to noises run to social media 24 7 then when we go back to the church we are not bringing blessing back to the church maybe we are just bringing more noises and our needs back to the church so and encourage uh, and a reminder to all of us during this time before we go back to the church get ready get ourselves ready by going to the cave and meet god there and receive wisdom and strength from the lord so that when we meet one another we are on full tank or better still we are overflowing from our our vessel to bless other people let us pray god we thank you for this uh, sharing from psalm 142 we ask lord that you will continue to minister to us and give us that hunger for your presence the hunger for the intimacy with you that we will find our own caves that we will enjoy that intimacy with you so that we re- we will remember our responsibility to our fellow uh, fellow brothers and sisters in christ that we will meet again very soon bless us lord bless us as we meet you every time and that when we meet others we will be a blessing to them in the name of jesus we pray amen the lord bless you